now our last topic with radicals, solve some radical equations by using what's called the principle of squaring. Um, we're going to solve for x by taking an equation and squaring both sides. The reason for that, let's write this down. So this is the problem we're working with, and I'm going to square both sides of the equation to keep the balance. And the reason for that is that I know that the square root of x times the square root of x is x. So it allowed me to get rid of the radical where the variable was concerned. Again, remember, the square root of x times the square root of x, which is the square root of x squared, is x. So that's why I squared both sides. On the right-hand side, 7 squared is 49, and I have my solution. I'm all done. x is equal to 49. My original problem read this. It said the square root of x is equal to 7. So you would take your answer and put it in for x and ask yourself if that is a true statement. And we get to say yes, it is. Let's do another one where there's a binomial under the radical. So that one's a real simple one. So again, principle of squaring is going to be used. And so now what I have is the square root of y minus 5 equals 21. And I am going to square both sides and order that the expression under the radical or the radicand can come out from under the radical so that I can solve for y. So the square root of y minus 5, that quantity squared, is just y minus 5. And 21 squared is 441. And it's easy now. I'm just going to add 5 to both sides. And I'll find my solution for y is 446. I'll take that and put it in my original equation. So let's go ahead and check this. So I have the square root of y minus 5 equals 21. So I'm going to put in for y my value of 446 and subtract 5 from it. And I'll get 441. And I just want to check with my calculator if I need to and see if the square root of 441 is 21. And I'll find out that it is. Now we try to fool you in this topic quite a bit, and I don't know if you've noticed this yet, um, but when we've been speaking about our principal square roots, we get a positive answer. When we take the square root of something, we get a positive answer all the time. So if I were to ask you to solve this equation, you need to pause right away and say, well, the square root of something is always positive, so how can it be negative? And so you got to caution and, and just, I would like it if you would stop and not do anything and just tell me there's no solution. But if you didn't notice it, if you went ahead and squared both sides, right here, the square root of x squared is x, and a negative 8 times a negative 8 is a positive 64. And then when you go to do your check, you would say to yourself, the original problem read the square root of x equals a negative 8. So is the square root of 64, because that's my answer, equal to a negative 8? And you'd say, no, it is not. Um, you would tell me that there is no solution to this problem. So you could really, if you would notice it right up front, when the square root of your variable expression is equal to a negative number, you just have to pause and say, no, it's not going to work. Finally, one last problem when solving equations. Uh, and I'm not going into a lot of detail. There are a lot of, more, a lot of problems that we could do in, along those lines. But here's one that might be a little bit more challenging. I need to solve for x. And there is an x under the radical on this left-hand side. So I must square both sides to get x out from under that radical. So I'm going to go ahead and show that I'm going to square both sides. On the left side, that's pretty nice. The square root of x plus 7 squared is just x plus 7. But on the right side, x minus 5 squared means to take x minus 5 and multiply it by x minus 5 and FOIL that. So this x times x is x squared. And then I have a minus 5x here and another minus 5x here. And a negative 5 times a negative 5 is a positive 25. And finally, on the right-hand side, I have x squared minus 10x plus 25. That's on the right. On the left, I have x plus 7. Wow, I have an equation that I have to solve that has an x squared term in it. The only way we know how to do that yet is to solve it by factoring it and using the zero product rule. So we need to get zero on the left side of this equation. So we need to subtract x from both sides, and we need to subtract 7 
from both sides. And so finally, we will now have 0 over here equals x squared minus, this is a 1, so 11x plus um, 18. And now I have to use the 0 product rule to solve it. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to go. Let's go right here. So if I have 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 8, then I need to factor this trinomial into the product of two binomials. And that will require an x in the front of each. I'm sorry, I must have copied that wrong. That was an 18. And now I need to look for two numbers whose product is a positive 18, but adds to be a negative 11. And those two numbers are 9 and 2, but they both need to be negative. So they will add to be a negative 11, and they multiply to be that positive 18. The zero product rule says take each of those factors and set them equal to zero. So take both of these and set them equal to zero, and then add 9 to both sides to get x alone, and find out that one of your solutions is 9, and over here add 2 to both sides to find out that x is equal to 2. And we found two solutions for this problem. Now what you've got to be careful of is one of them might cause a negative number under the radical. Um, or, on, uh, actually in this case, on the right side of the equation. So you really should, must, absolutely do the check in the original equation, which read the square root of x plus 7 equals x minus 5. So one of my answers was a 9. So I'm going to put a 9 in here for x and then a 9 in here for x. And 9 plus 7 is 16, which square root of 16 is 4, and 9 minus 5 is 4, and that one checks just fine. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put the 2 in for x. So we know this answer is good. When we put in a 2 here for x, we have 2 plus 7, which is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. When I put a 2 here, 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. And the square root of 9 equals a positive 3, not a negative 3. So we have to come over here and we have to say, while we solved that, um, what's called the quadratic equation by factoring and got the two answers, both answers did not check and work. This is the conclusion of our work with radicals. It's pretty involved. It's a, it's a fairly, um, can be a challenging topic that simplifying radicals is the one that's most important to get a handle on first so that you can um, add and subtract radical expressions and rationalize denominators.